Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today. You know me. I'm mostly an RPG channel. We talk about trending topics and stuff, but I try to really focus in on role playing games. One game that is always requested by you guys for me to cover is Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. Now, I'll be upfront and honest. I have not played to completion the original title. I've always been curious about it. I think I got like four hours logged on Steam. Nothing crazy at all, though, but I've always been intrigued by this series. I also did cover the interesting ARG that was happening prior to the full reveal of Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. So I'm in on this game. I'm interested in it, and I do plan on covering its future more down the line as I do play through the original game so I can have more validated coverage, so to speak. But there has been... A bit of a controversy ongoing now when it comes to Bloodlines 2, the sequel to the cult classic, and it's an RPG in trouble. Ah, ah, he said it! He said it! It's one that's struggling now, and I'm a bit concerned heading into its 2021 launch. This all started off with a delay that seemed sensible to me. We're gonna read that letter, but then... It just goes down the hill from here, man, and I'm a bit concerned. We are moving the launch of Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 to 2021. Our goal has always been to deliver the best possible game, to immerse you into a Seattle reimagined in the world of darkness, and deliver a worthy successor to the original Bloodlines game. Due to the quality bar and ambitions we have set for ourselves, we have made the difficult decision that we need more time. That means our goal to release in 2020 is no longer possible. Moving launch is one of the changes that we are making to ensure the best Best player experience possible. This is not a decision taken lightly, nor is it the first option we considered. We will share more information in the coming months on launch timing and other organizational changes that will help us achieve this goal. See, this is a bit of foreshadowing into what we're getting into later on. We understand that this will be a disappointment to many of you, but we also appreciate how our ambition is echoed through many parts of the community. We hope that you understand that while difficult, this is the right call. So the reception was what you'd kind of expect. Some people upset. I was in the camp of, okay, cool. I actually have some time to finish the first Bloodlines game, maybe get a 2020 review out for you guys. And then we can really start the coverage for Bloodlines 2, like so many of you have been requesting. For some folks, they were, as expected, very understanding. But like I said, they kind of foreshadowed what was going to happen afterwards in that delay letter, that this is one of many changes that will hopefully improve the game's development. So they let some really important people go. And uh, yeah, like I'm talking like original hands on deck creators of the first Bloodlines game that would definitely impact the vision of the second one are now completely gone, seemingly unexplained. So Paradox left us with another letter uh, and this is where <laughs> it gets really interesting. Hi everyone, Paradox Interactive and Hardsuit Labs have some important updates to share today. We recently shared that we were making some organizational changes to Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2's team. As promised, we will now give an update on what that means. Lead narrative designer Brian Mitsoda and creative director Kai Clooney are no longer part of the team at Hardsuit Labs. This was a joint decision made by the leadership of Heartsuit Labs and Paradox Interactive. We appreciate and value the contributions of Brian and Kai, which were instrumental in establishing the game's storyline and dark tone, and have helped to ensure that we are making a true successor to the iconic Bloodlines. We wish them both the best in their future endeavors. With that, we are excited to announce that Alexandre Mendrika has come aboard as creative consultant filling in the creative director role for Bloodlines 2 and will help us in the final stages of development. Alexandre is committed to following the vision that is in place and successfully bringing Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 to the fans. Alexandre has been a part of the industry for more than 20 years and has worked on iconic franchises such as Assassin's Creed, Warhammer 40k, Far Cry, and more. With a long history of shipping excellent franchises, we are excited to see what Andre brings to the game and the world of darkness. These changes to the team are focused on one thing to bring you the best possible Vampire the Masquerade game. Interesting word choice there. We will share further updates as they occur. So when this game was officially revealed, they had Brian Mitsoda front and center on stage, almost like a, dare I say, marketing piece, kind of like, hey, look, we got the original guy here, original brains from the first game on deck for the sequel. Big deal, right? You like the original, you're gonna like this one. You know what how it works, right? And all I'm gonna say is, first and foremost, that when these positions become vacant mid-development, the titles speak for themselves. 
lead narrative designer. I don't think this one is as super impactful. And the reason I say that is just because at this point in the game, even if it's releasing mid 2021, the story, the side quests, I believe they are complete. I believe that is already done. That's on paper. There's no changing that, no reversing it. But still, it's a significant vacant position. It's still someone who's been familiar with the story, how it's developed over all of these years. With that in mind, creative director, the director of the creative vision, God. Looks like my summer vacation is over. That's worse in my opinion, because that is someone who's overseeing the entire project. It has been pretty much their vision the whole way through. You're removing that at the end of it all and saying, we need a new set of eyes on this. It doesn't make sense. We saw Akumi Nakamura leave Bethesda and Tango Gameworks after her big boom of popularity across the industry after E3. Creative director role, vacant, and guess what happened? Ghostwire Tokyo sort of went off the map for a long while. Halo Infinite, many people leaving that game, and guess what happened? Big delay, didn't look too hot when it was revealed to the public. Anthem, another game that had a lot of people leaving mid-development. We also did see cultural issues at Bioware, so keep that in mind that this is something playing a factor into why people may have been leaving, but what I'm trying to say is people leaving significant positions mid-development or being, in this case, outright terminated is not a good sign now i'm not saying that suddenly bloodlines 2 is going to be a horrible game a horrible rpg it's going to be like anthem it's going to end up looking like halo infinite or something along those lines don't get me wrong there but i'm just saying historically speaking it's not a good sign for the game rock paper shotgun had a letter from brian mitsoda one that will be even more eye-opening to everything that's going on here and just how strange of a decision this is. Until recently, I was the narrative lead on a video game called Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 for Hard Suit Labs, being published by Paradox Interactive, which owns 30% of Hard Suit Labs. After almost five years of involvement with the studio, I was suddenly terminated on July 16th, 2020. Keyboard, suddenly terminated. No heads up at all. That this came as a shock to me is underselling it. I've worked on Bloodlines 2 for almost five years. The story and main cast was initially conceived in my living room. I helped develop the pitch for Hard Suit Labs and helped pitch the project to Paradox in Las Vegas. I've been in charge of the narrative since the beginning, working long days and sometimes weekends to deliver a successor to Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, and I've never been led to believe that I hadn't succeeded. Very obviously, I've also been involved in the PR and marketing side of things, as I alluded to earlier, even though it was one of the most difficult parts for me. I'm a pretty private person. Press and crowds tend to heavily trigger my social anxiety, which if you've ever wondered about the gloves, they are armor that makes me feel less exposed in situations that trigger my anxiety, which is totally understandable. So from day one, his living room, man, his living room is where this baby was born and they just gave him the boot out of nowhere after all that time. Now, I don't want to speculate too much, but to me, this speaks to creative differences. I feel like he would have said this in his public letter. I feel like maybe what was happening was he was making a game, they weren't a fan of what was happening with that, and they just decided to suddenly give him the boot, which, once again, just, it blows my mind, man. Like, he's been there five years, like, just let him finish it at that point. The letter continues, Bloodlines and the fandom of the game mean the world to me, so I lent my legacy with the franchise, my name, and my participation in marketing efforts for the game, even when it was intensely difficult and took a mental and physical toll. This is all because I wanted to do what was best for the game and the team. The pride in the work, the fan expectations, and the support from co-workers who started out as fans kept me going through the long five years. And I'm incredibly disappointed and frustrated to say this is where it ends for me on the project. Even crazier, I was not part of the conversations that led to this decision to delay production. And to my knowledge, there were no delays caused by Bloodlines 2's narrative development. I am confident and proud of the work that I and my team put forward. When that work will be seen and what form it will take is unknown to me. It was a pleasure to work on this game and with many people at Hardsuit Labs and Paradox, and I'm sorry I won't be able to see it to the end. I spent years on some of the best characters and dialogue that I ever wrote. It means a lot to hear from the Bloodlines community, and I do hope that what's finally delivered is as satisfying as I intended it to be. Thanks to all of you who supported me through 
this project. That's just, I feel so bad, honestly. And I know maybe he's not putting it out there for pity, but I just feel awful about the hand he was dealt. Like this is a passion project, right? Like overcome as someone with anxiety, like I'm gonna cut a little deep here. As someone with anxiety, sometimes it's really hard to overcome those like demons in your head. To put that all aside and on the line for a product and say like, I believe in this so strongly, I'm gonna go against like everything within my very being to help make this the thing that people really wanted. Like hats off to him, first of all, man. Like that is just hard to do and it's incredible how much he accomplished. I personally feel because they did a fill-in for creative director, but they didn't do a fill-in for the lead narrative director of this whole project. It's because nothing's really gonna change narratively speaking, hopefully, right? Like fingers crossed, cause I trust his work more uh, as someone who is really bringing this series to life than anyone else, quite frankly. Uh, but man, like that's such a shame. It's, it's such a shame. And the fact that he was not a part of any delay conversations or anything along those lines, and that finally this letter comes out a month later. So he's been out of there for a while. Uh, it's gotta have been really frustrating, hard to bite your tongue. I'm sure there's more to this. There's gotta be more to this, but contracts and all that stuff that goes into game development, I'm sure has limited what can be said, but hopefully more answers begin to surface because this is just really unfortunate as someone who is trying to get into the bloodline series i'm still going to play the original i still want to cover the second one because i know that a, a lot of people are really looking for me as like an rpg guy to, to go in on this game and i'm interested in it uh, i absolutely will but it's just uh, a tough loss here uh for a, a team that um has worked really hard to make sure that they can bring people a legitimate product that was inspired by the original game you don't see that all too often so, ladies and gentlemen, that's the update on Bloodlines 2, an RPG that has sadly fallen into a bit of trouble with a delay and some significant staff changes. What do you think of this? Let me know in the comments down below. Other than that, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. Big thank you to all the patrons who continue to kill it with the support here. Appreciate each and every single one of you. I'll talk with you soon. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.